not since Queen Victoria has a British monarch ruled for 60 years. So to celebrate the Queen's Diamond Jubilee, our British cousins are staging an Olympic-sized celebration. It all started at dawn today with rehearsals for the full state procession next week and the release of never-before-seen home movies of the Windsors at home and play. Here, a young Queen Elizabeth playing with Prince Charles and his younger sister, Princess Anne, at home and during a beach holiday in 1957. Is the monarchy hopelessly outdated or a unique bond that helps a changing nation survive modern challenges? Joining me now, two special guests, Caddy Kay, anchor of BBC World News America, and Martin Bashir, host of The Martin Bashir Show, of course, on MSNBC. Uh, Caddy, first to you. Uh, those of us who look longingly at the royals, and we know how popular they have been, and the coverage of royal weddings, and, of course, the, the uh, outpouring of grief over Princess Diana, what is it about the monarchy? What makes it so unique about the British monarchy? You know, Andrea, I think the Queen herself is something of a bulwark against change, but also, for many Brits, a symbol of specialness. And it's not just here that people might look longingly at the royals. It's within Britain as well. Every single institution in Britain almost seems to have lost in popularity ratings. Uh, Parliament, the press, the police, um, you name it, across the board, people seem to have in recent years felt a sense of dissatisfaction with British institutions and the one extraordinary exception is the monarchy. Uh, they have their approval ratings up at 80 percent. Republicanism in Britain is really a, a non-factor. It's been something like 20 percent of the population for the last few decades. So Brits, whatever their divisions are, and the country is in many ways more divided than when the Queen came to the throne in 1952, we still seem to revere and love the monarchy and it is it's partly the institution which harks back to our history reminds us that we are special that we have these centuries of history but I think it is also partly Elizabeth herself well to that point there of course have been a lot of downs along with the ups uh, Martin memorably uh, you did the the famous interview with Princess Di uh, documenting the troubles in her marriage there was also in 1992 the burning uh, the accident that burned Windsor Castle part of Windsor Castle and what the Queen called the Annus Horribilis in her speech to Parliament but then listen to Prince Charles in this BBC documentary talking about his mother and the way she pulls them all through the Queen has provided an amazing record of you know, devotion and dedication and commitment. And each year, you know, doing the same, following the same patterns, which, which help to sort of, I think, anchor things a bit, you know, and give reassurance that something is there which is perhaps a little more timeless than other things which are changing all the time. Now, clearly he's speaking about the nation. He could also be speaking about the family, about the Windsors. I think so, Andrea. I think the other thing, to Katie's point, is that the Queen represents a commitment of service to the country, something that, although she's, of course, the beneficiary of luxury in the form of various palaces, in terms of her practice, she served the nation resolutely through many difficult times. Of course, the last century marked by wars and the royal family themselves involved in being supportive uh, during bombings in London during the Second World War. It's kind of been a practice of devotion and public service, which really has marked this family out. I think one of the difficulties for them is that Prince Charles uh, has not really uh, developed that kind of reputation. His mother is resolute and dedicated in her service. For many people, Prince Charles is slightly unhinged. He gets some interesting ideas about various issues, but ostensibly was cruel to his first wife and hasn't really been somebody that has represented or at least embodied what his mother has done. And there are many people, and Catty will know this as well, who feel that if Prince Prince William were to become the next heir to the throne, that would be preferable as opposed to Prince Charles. So I think the monarchy has changed with the times, but there's still going to be something of a blip at the point at which Her Majesty the Queen either passes away or decides to allow her son to succeed to the throne, because at that point I'm not sure that the popularity ratings will be as high as they have been of late. Well, of course, Caddy, we've seen the Buckingham Palace publicity machine 
we have things that are hardly an accident with Prince Charles and Kamala uh, going on BBC and doing the weather in Scotland and then in Toronto uh, spinning some records. So he is trying to humanize his image. Yeah, he is trying to humanize his image, but that's a double-edged sword for royals because part of what Brits like about um, Her Majesty is that she is somehow removed from us, that she stands above us, that she doesn't get involved in the kind of day-to-day -day swings in emotion or swings in fashion. I mean, you would never see the Queen doing what Prince Charles did in Toronto and, you know, turning a few records on the turnstable. I mean, just, it's unthinkable. And I think that's sort of part of what we like about it. I mean, it's been really interesting living here in America and comparing the two systems where you have in your president all all the ceremonial um, expectations of the country as well as the elected head of state and we've divided those we have the Queen and we have an elected Prime Minister and somehow in a way it's a system that works pretty well because you can question the Prime Minister and drill down on him and hold him accountable for his policies whilst keeping the Queen in reverence for you know what she represents for the country and for patriotism. And, Although, Katie, I would, I would, system, Katie, I would, I would slightly dispute that because I, I think John Boehner is actually King John in many ways. <laughs> He's like a monarch who actually well, is a titular head who does absolutely nothing. So, in fact, I, I, I don't think the distinction is so great. Good man. <laughs> we're going to have to leave that comparison right there That's as we shame. celebrate the Queen's <laughs> jubilee in advance. Katty Kay, of course, we can watch you on BBC World America, and don't miss Martin. But here today and every day, 3 p.m. every day, weekdays, Eastern, right here on MSNBC.